Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in the Bruderkrieg, an Austrian victory in which we're playing as everyone's favorite, uh, Russia, the Russian Republic. But we'll begin the Duma campaign. Ever since the Russian victory in the Great Europa Kree, our people have had great political instability with many questioning Karinsky's motives and what his plan for the future is. We must hold elections soon as the leftists and right-wing groups continue to rise to access the election GUI. Click the voting box in your politics screen. Also, the Russian Republic uses loading trees, so new trees will load in after you win the election. A chaotic Republic, which is right here for election stuff. We have Kerensky's Tudoviks, we have uh, Milyukov's CDP, Lenin's RSDLP, and then Belogorov Erp. A chaotic Republic. Russia's political spectrum is composed of many contrasting ideas. The democratic left of Russia, being mostly dominated by social democrats, liberals, and center left groups. Many of these groups seek to preserve the Russian democracy as is in some radical reform and in an attempt to socialize and revitalize the country. Most left to support the Trudevik Party and the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party, despite the party having no real leadership and the two main candidates for the president being both Lenin and Tsarotsi. These latter are much more popular than the, than the followers of the Marx and Trotsky and the conservatives and the Russian nationalists of the Russian alt right. Alt right. If we choose to support the democratic groups on the left, we will have a choice between the three major parties on the left. Social Democrats are the Trudeviks, or the Martov worshippers, as referred to by opposition parties. The Constitutional Democratic Party, those who support democracy closer to the democracy of Great Britain. A liberalist, constitutional, constitutional democracy, where the royalty are nothing but figureheads. And the RSDLP are heavily prohib prohibitionists and supporters of an industrialized Russia, an industrialized Siberia, wanting radical economic and social changes, well as the reconstruction of the military systems and policies put in place by Kerensky and the president form. Martov. Then we have the Democratic Right. With the United Orthodox Conservative Front and many of the smaller par parties, forming the bulk of the Democratic Russian right wing groups, or possibly the more progressive traditionalist groups, the uh, Pravaya Svoboda, a uh, more libertarian Republican party supporting the rights of the Russians, yet have some anti Ukrainian sentiment, but seem to be on the good side of the Don and Kubani and Cossacks, or possibly the much more radicalist right wing, the Black Hundreds, who believe in empowering the Russian monarchy and forming a fascist. Russo-centric, anti-Ukrainian, anti-Semitism, by far the largest of the radicals and right-wing groups, having fought in Kreshchalska against the Bolsheviks and the RSDLP, resulting in a heavy victory for their assault divisions. And armed wings, with many Bolsheviks being separate kill, which will we choose? Election decide the fate of Russia. Well, uh, I don't know why, but this time going, I really like monarchies, so we're going to go to the Ur, probably. I want to do the the Reds, too. Judeviks are alright, CDP is alright, but let's do this. Oh, actually, that looks really cool, actually, too. Constitutional Democratic Party? Well, the Union of Russian Peoples shall bring Russia back to its once former glory under the Nikolai Belogorov. Tsar Nicholas II has always been uh, has been away from power for too long, and the Russian people need a strong leader who can uh, solve political instability and a peace military. All hail the Tsar. I'm probably going to screw this up so badly. So this is an ERP. Union of Russian People. Polarization increased Tsar's power, increased populism and nationalism, attacking lots of forces. RSLP, RSDLP. Destabilization against prohibition. CDP. Constitutionalism, political unification, limited prohibition, Trudeviks, internal stabilization, expansion, welfare, prohibition. So, um, a long way to go. With, while with most Russians being liberal, the conservative philosophy is not as popular as it once was, but this is the year we can take advantage of the instability and use fiery speeches with words of glory and power to flock support the movement. So now, we need political power, and we gotta start doing this stuff. Begin this campaign. That thing just doesn't shut. Begin the campaign. We have a lot of ground to make up, and this can be achieved by spreading word of the Tsar and Russian glory throughout Russia. The calm people of nobility shall all certainly buy our message. Riots in Moscow bars. Several violent riots broke out in Lower Moscow today as a group of RDLSP sports came to a bar demanding that the owner shut it down, talking about how it was weakening the mind and the buys of Russians everywhere. Soon a bar fight occurred, but the tense situation of the country led to many, even those who had no idea what the original fight was about, to join the fray. Eventually, a tire city block was consumed by the rioting, and the police had to violently intervene. As of right now, it seems that roughly 200 men were injured, with five dying for their wounds, four of which were RDLSP supporters. We're lucky less than a dozen died. Conservatism in Russia. Battle of Navarre, 1700. After crushing defeat at the hands of Sweden, everyone would be forgiven for thinking that the dreams of Russia would be crushed. However, the green coats of Russia were brave and under Peter the Great. They marched on and eventually crushing the Swedes at the Battle of Poltava. Russia's position in the global secured. Next, 
in the 19th century came that shortly short Frenchie, trying to subdue Mother Russia using her using his speedy tactics. He would also soon regret ever stepping on Russian soil. What followed were years of prosperity under the Tsar until 1905 rolled around. In 1905, the Tsar merely acted on his gut instinct, and for that he received the worst punishment for king, abdication. Autocrat or not, Nicholas did not deserve it, a single bit of it. After the Tsar's abdication, what followed were the years of Kerensky at democracy, ending it, any and all glory and prestige Russia held on the global stage. A Dudovics only wanted to see Russian ruins, and by trying to tying it to the chains of capitals and making the great Rus forget its imperial ties. And the Belogorov, a man with a huge political ambition, the man who wants to bring back the Tsar to Russia. He is a man who sees every, through everything through a conservative lens. He thinks that only through the return of the Tsar's regime will the glory of Russia be revived. People of all kinds, poor and rich, have ah, flocked to him and his party, the Erp, in similar hopes of bringing back the Tsar. If he's to succeed in the upcoming Duma elections, as you may be realizing, maybe Russia could get back onto the world stage. He does have a point. The Danger of Constitutionalists the CDP under Pavel Milyukov claimed that they want to give back the Tsar some powers, but they would make Russia into a liberal heckhole. Their problems will never bring Russia to greatness and only work for their own good. Kiev Station Bombing One of the large railway stations in Kiev was, or, uh, was bombed yesterday, causing several casualties, but luckily no deaths. The bombing was struck down a Ukrainian terrorist group that wants to innovate in Ukraine. The railways would take time to repair, many have already had anti-Ukrainian sentiments are calling for repayment of the cost of the bombing and cost in Ukrainian blood property. Ukrainians are the power category of Russia. As you can see, we're also trying to build up some of our cities as well. Uh, where there's 60%, it's not bad, so we'll just build up more here. I just want to build, 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 build. Promote erudentism. Can we give you more political power at all? Um, it's not bad. It's good be, but better consumer goods is what I like. Better consumer goods, better. Social democracy drift. We gotta get rid of you. Eventually, but we can't we'll probably do that until we get rid of everyone else. So now with that done, we're with the ERP. Uh, can we campaign? Uh, we can choose one of these. Decreases his crisis support by one. Um, 140 days left. So we have 14%. But how can you see, like, a map? Oh, we have national missions too. Which is actually really cool. Complete the mission. Uh, you have to industrialize Siberia. It's severely and seriously underdeveloped. But building up a strong industrial base through uh, infrastructure and factories should prove a major boost to our economy. This one's fighting unemployment. Millions of Russians remain unemployed due to the lack of proper industrialization. We must continue to build, 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 and create a solid job flow. Construct defense lines. We're the largest country in the world by far, thus we're surrounded by enemies. The greatest threat lies in the west where Austria, Prussia, and France seek to conquer the motherland. We must protect this border with special care. And then we have the Great Bear. We defeat the Austrians, Ottomans, and Japanese with their monstrous army, and none shall stand in the way of our Russian domination. That's cool. I really want to get this one done. Because no need needs civvies and infrastructure. Yeah. I, or maybe this one too. I don't know. We're just going to build up as much as we possibly can eventually. So. I think that's really cool. But yeah, I can't really see what's here. Create support by one. Increase by three. I don't think they'll really support us. Is there Poland? Um. Moscow? Oh, wow. So it, up 17. so it does affect it. But it's hard to tell, like. Because not every place has the exact same percentage of people that want to support you in certain areas. Northern Oblasts. Finland. We don't have that much political power. We get only half a power a day. Um, and Perm, East Siberia, West Siberia. I want to increase whatever we can by three. Southern Oblasts. Oh, we can't do this one. We must have 40 political power. And Poland or Belarus. But it goes by one. Maybe I'll save it for that one. Ah, I'll spend it anyways for now. Um, there you go. Kaiser Carl's speech. Well, this for 20%. We're getting there. <clears throat> Oops, I forgot. Okay. Um, attacking the socialists. The slander Lenin. The Mensheviks are the greater threat. Slander Kerensky. The Mensheviks really are. For Path to former glory. The Russian Empire started with the Tsar Ivan and featured stars such as Peter the Great and Catherine the Great. The mid Russia global power extended from Europe to Asia and America even. But since the 1905 revolution, her glory has been stained by liberalism and socialism. We'll make Russia great again. So, every weapon should have been stolen. And one of the most mysterious cases of mutiny we have seen today. A shipment containing troops and their weapons have just disappeared. I never reached a station on the Pacific coast, and we have no idea where the disappearance occurred, other than somewhere between the Urals and Lake Baikal. We don't know the reason for the mutiny, or how they ma managed to enact the mutiny and disappeared so cleanly. The Siberian Wastes are a mysterious place. Pretty much. We're running to Tsar Nicholas II. 
Ah, but anti-police brutality protests begin. After several instances of police brutality and quelling riots and protests, a large amount of crowds protesting the police brutality have sprung up in major cities, demand that something needs to be done. There have been a few acts of violence within these protests, but overall they seem peaceful. Or at least now, at least as long as we do as well as they want. We'll start an inv investigation of these reports. Sarah Nicholas II is our best friend, <laughs> and will serve as an outlet to the nobility and our classmen. The rich of Russia shall certainly help fund our campaign and spread the word. Soon, once we get to power, we can give them back the power they deserve. Anti-police uh, protests turn to riots. After a lack of results from the government, along with further reports of police brutality upon the protests, they've been transformed into riots. Entire blocks of Kiev, Minsk, and St. Petersburg and Volgograd have turned into anarchy as shops and homes are destroyed. What police uh, presence there is is already at the location are being overwhelmed by the sheer number of rioters and there have been multiple deaths among them. Some people who stand on the side of the protesters claim that the violence was brought about by disguised officers, trying to turn the public opinion against the protesters. Nice. Ah, uh, make Russia great again. Vladimir Kolskov was a young man. He was assigned to put some posters up on the streets of St. Petersburg. These posters showed a Belgorov, pointing at the person reading it, simply labeled, Vote for the Earp for Better Income, Glory, Prosperity, and Returning to Russia to his former repute. Through the first poster, he let out a big sigh. Suddenly, a tall man in his forwards approached Kolskov. Kolskov, is that you? He immediately recognized the voice of Brezhnev. Why, yes, indeed, my boy. Brezhnev was a 45-year-old man who also served as Kolskov's teacher and helped him find a job. Strange, why are you doing this? Shouldn't be man in the store I helped you find a job in? Yes, sir, but a minor outbreak in the town forced the store to close down. I told for the notice that I need some money, so I'm doing this. Well, how much should I pay you? 20 rubles per 100 posters, sir. A strange silence soon followed. You know what, Kozkov? I dislike the conservatives and the whole Earp thing. Why is that, sir? We know if you were alive during the Tsarist autocracy. Another moment of silence. Well, Kozkov, do you know about that one Greek American author, uh, Obamatavian Barakas? No, sir, I don't get to read books often. What? Ah, uh, well, since so you don't know about it, it's uh, 2020 USA elections. It is a competition between two people for presidentship, Joe Biden and Donald Trump. The latter was one of the presidents, a very racist man with an undying hate for Max. Did I just hear 2020 U.S. elections? Uh, boys came from behind the two men. Good day, gentlemen. My name is Alan Smith. A young man spoke broken Russian, barely understandable. I see you two were talking about that novel. Indeed, good sir, we were, replied Brezhnev. Yes, you see, I'm a painter, and whenever I see it's an opportunity, I paint. I was American, but came to Russia to demise great nation. Now, if you would notice, Mr. Belgorov, this painting looks like a lot like Donald Trump for the novel and the slogan, Make Russia Great Again. Sounds like a slogan that Trump used. So you do something that make both of you crack up super hard. After all, making people happy is my job. Both of them looked with awe as the man took out orange and yellow paint. We began to paint his hair in the mixture of the two colors. He painted a tuxedo on him and some dead Hispanics in the background. All of them started to laugh their butts off. Oh, what are you doing? Except touching election campaign posters? A soldier probably from law enforcement had arrived. No, mister, said Alan. They dispersed, darn it. Yes, mister, just give me a minute. Then Bre said Brezhnev, giving a paper to Kolskov. Take this to the school and just say that you want a job as a piano per intern. Thank you, sir. Disperse. I am not afraid to shoot. Following the orders given to them by the soldiers, they dispersed, waving their farewells to each other. The soldier looked at the poster and chuckled to himself. His daughter described such a man to him from a novel she had read. He ripped the poster and put it on his pocket at the moment. They only thought one thing, which... What the... Man. No comments. Attacking the socialists. An increase of nobility comes to a party. Ooh. After Belgrave's speech, a crowd of nobility said the support of the party in the upcoming elections to some remain undecided. Slander Lenin. Well, we don't really need to slander Lenin. I mean, he's not, he's not leading the way. He's just there. It's Kerensky you gotta focus on. Mensheviks are the greatest threat. The RSDLP are gaining power of mere fantasy, and the Trudeviks are still posing a greater threat to Russia. The old widespread support among the workers, throwing out false and impossible promises of breeding instability, attacking Kerensky must be our biggest priority. And Russia's only option, after Ukrainian fields burn. Fires was up around, above the Ukrainian hills, burning thousands of acres across the forest tame. At first, it was thought to be a freak accident, but reports by black hundreds meetings nearby in the history of anti-Ukrainian sentiments and terror attacks have led to many to believe that this was an arson caused by them. The fields destroyed will produce no food this year, and they were lucky that loss did not seriously endanger any uh, significant portion of our population. Some of us will have to tighten our belts this year. Ah, but no other party shall prepare Russia for the coming war. No other party shall bring Russia back to her former glory. No other party shall give the power that Tsar deserves. That's why we can be the only option in this presidential race. 29%? Actually, after doing that one, 29%. Um, mm, 32 is not bad. Rush is the only option. <laughs> more political power, stability, get, support goes up by 3, and that'll go down. Then we'll do it one more time, and then we should have it. Barely, but we should have it. So how about after this one? The elections, Russian elections have arrived. After months of campaign, the election to decide the fate of Russia hangs in the balance. Oh, the Union of People victorious. People, Russian people. Union of people, Russian people victorious. Union of Russian people have won this year's elections. The main intentions are giving power to the Tsar and expanding Russia's borders. Cool.
And up here is effects for a presidential ruling. Approval rating, I guess, really. Nice. 70 days left. 35%. Um, nice. So now, we can't do any focuses, but we're 38%, which means we should win, right? And we can't do a focus, which I'm actually okay with, just so we can start getting some of this, these guys done, too. Airborne Assault. Air experience plus 0 0.06. Cavalry. We're actually probably going to use Cavalry quite a bit here. Um, I like armor and all, but Cavalry is going to be super helpful. Well, that's 150. This is 100. I wonder if anything in our focus that gives us more cavalry and whatnot. Of course, we could get some more stability as well. You know, we'll get stability first, and then we'll go for one of these guys too. That'll be worth it. Are we still training ships? All ships should be training. Yes, yes. 38% is pretty good, though. Um. So, yeah. Actually, how many more days do we have? We have about a month. Roughly a month. That's not bad. I mean, we could go with Airborne Assault, but I'm not going to really use Paratroopers. I've never used Paratroopers. Almost never. Campaign ends very soon. And we have to have a cup of coffee to keep it nice and warm. That should be going up quite a bit faster. Well, if only. Uh, air experience is not bad. Do we have any extra planes? Vienna Constitution. We can do that one too. Do that. Do that. There you go. As we were training quite a few planes as well already. Fighters. There you go. There you go. There you go. You uh, two uh, are tactical bombers, so you guys can go and do that. You guys can go ahead and do that. You're not quite done yet, naval bombers. Keep them, um, I'll put you around here. I don't know what the Japanese might be up to. Elections have begun. After a month's campaign, all tension, debates, and activism led up to this day. The main four candidates, Alex Kerensky, Lenin, Milyukov, and Belgorov, will be competing for the presidency of the Russian Republic. Who shall win? The elections! Yay, elections! Armor. Yeah, I do want to use armor. But cavalry sounds like fun. Maybe I won't use cavalry. Ah, oh, I will use cavalry, at least for a while. We can always replace generals later. Get the medium tanks. Anti-liberal raids. Oh, is this war sport going down? Results are in. After counting the ballots, the results of the Duma elections are in. The victor of the 1936 Duma election shot a fate of Russia for decades to come. Ert moderates. Oh, look at this guy. Wow, he looks like Santa Claus. The elections are over. And the votes have been completely tallied. The, after most anticipation, the results are in. It seems as if the ERP, the Union of Russian People's Party, had won the seventh Duma elections with a clear cut majority. The victory of the ERP presents a seismic shift in Eastern European geopolitics. They are led by Belogorov and his conservative and imperialist followers, plan to put an end to the liberal era of Russia, implementing conservative economic reforms, ensuring army loyalty and the possible return of the Tsar. A victory for the Russian nobility. Nice. End of the focus is loaded. First days of Belogorov's government. The Romanov family lost control of Russia, which now has become a democracy. Now, though, Belgrav's government can bring Russia back under the control of its own family, make things right again. Extermination of leftist threats. Holy crap. Uh, the what? The white purge is concluded. Ooh. We need to get rid of that. Army of the Tsar is going to be really good. Public popularity. Ooh. Um... This is that public popularity first. The public, while not having any issue with the Romanovs, also likes its current ruling democracy. We very much to restore the Tsar, then we must get rid of or get the public on our side. Restore the Empire. Remember the Eastern Front. Put the designs. This is a lot of, just a lot of blueprints. Mobility is key. Presenting civil war, nice. So those are all blueprints. How about over here? Uh, meeting with the Tsar. Alexander Belgorov and Tsar Nicholas II sat together in the room. Tensions have been high following the declaration of victory by the Union of Be Russian people in the recent Russian elections. Congratulations on your victory, the Tsar said. Belgorov gave a smile. He knew he had the Tsar's support. Your Highness, your title shall be returned under my rule in Russia. Change is coming. Oh, you get some bases. You get bonuses. You get military factories, which is finally something interesting. Uh, dockyards, dockyards. At least you get dockyards out of this one. Yeah, we can wait for all that type of stuff. So, support Russian small businesses. That's all right. Put up for Zaza. Romanov Foundation. Political popularity. 
Ukrainian breadbasket. Growth in the heartlands. A part of Europe we hold, we all know as bad as Siberia, it's still not all that developed. The situation on that side of the Urals is, on the other hand, an entirely separate story. The trans siberian Railroad still functions, but not as well as it could, and the Far East is largely abandoned. We must fix this, and we have to fix it, because we want to go to war potentially with Japan too. So, uh, White Purge. The Imperial Army is lacking at now at best. When we are a democracy, a lot of how the army functions change, and a lot of it uh, not for the best. Now that we're in power, though, this issue can be fixed. In order to go through with the crackdowns, we must deal with the chiefs of the military, or else the crackdowns mean absolutely nothing. Actually, let's go to mark par partial mobilization, and then we're going to grab uh, whoever down here for army XP. Partly senile. Well, well senile is going crazy. Educated public servant. Nope, can't do that one. Yeah, I guess we're going to go senile guy. White purge. There you go. Build, for the love of God, build the Ukrainian breadbasket. Ukraine is a large part of our agriculture industry, and if that industry falls apart, Russia falls apart. Therefore, we must help further improve the area and its industry and do what we can to make sure Ukrainian agriculture stays alive. Pretty much stayed alive. Pretty much. 48%, oh God. Military crackdowns. Ever since they have done the 1905 revolution, the soldiers of all three branches of the military began to explore new ideas of thinking. New schools of thoughts. <coughs> their almost loyalty to the Tsar was no longer alive, and said, They decided on going down the path of their disloyalty. One of the largest schools of thought to corrupt the minds of the young men was socialism. They started to form soldier committees and even turned up against the Tsar. This would be a grave mistake. Grave mistake. According to recent events, ever since the victory of the URP in the 7th of Duma elections, the red rage that followed saw many soldiers deserting the army. This event clarified the suspicions of the loyal servants of the Tsar thought. However, it may not have even been an independent decision. But Joseph who should believe in the writings of the Marks may have had to do something with him. One thing is absolutely clear. If we need to ensure that soldiers ever remain in the Lord of the Tsar, the flame of the red threat must be doused before it gets spread like wildfire. Bloodshed, violence, gore, such are the truths of life. The White Purge. Outside of the night, a night of absolute chaos, anarchy and madness hidden by its absolute silence, only the letter from the light of the moon. A night where all humanity will disappear in the name of the Tsar of all of Russia. When will this night take place? No one except the Tsar and Belgorov know. Who will be the target? Anyone who the Tsar de de deems disloyal. The night will prove the brutal nature of the superior, where humanity will not be a word in the dictionary. Countless leaders have done this to cement their position of authority. Each drop of blood dropped in the name of the Tsar will be remembered by God, who have found a reason to punish Russia and its people for this inhumane act. In the name of God himself, please give an order to stop this madness. Such were the words of Mik Nik Mikhail Tukhachevsky, a general who the people referred to as New Bonaparte. He was informed of this by one of his loyal soldiers. It was eavesdropping on the Tsar in Belgorov's conversation, decided to write a letter to the Tsar, criticizing his policy. It seems as though he impaled his foot with his own pickaxe, writing the, this letter to the Tsar himself, and questioning his decisions. The Tsar's decision is absolute, and he's absolutely ridding Russia of its traitors. What will be done for the betterment of Russia and its people, and to remind the Russian people who, use, uh, who their loyalty belong to? May commence. The night has commenced. The night was finally arrived, the night that was been planning for so long. The aim was to eliminate any threat to the Tsar's reign over Russia. All of Russia. Everything that was going to happen on the night is a result of careful and delicate planning. Okay, I, a castle of cards. At the bottom layer would be unstable, the whole thing would come crashing down, no one is safe, political enemies, soldiers, even generals. It would all be delicately corrupted to seem like a neat little accident. 11 p.m. and most of Russia is asleep at this point. The first few operations began in major cities all over Russia. Newspaper panels all over Moscow and St. Petersburg were raided by police and most employees arrested or killed. Many soldiers and officers stationed in the major cities were also lured in and killed in a friendly fire incident. Then the Okhrana made their way to a smaller town and cities. It was probably by chance, but on their way to Rostov they saw Simeon Budinov attempting to escape. After a period of a brief and awkward silence, when the two parties ran into each other, Budinov tried to run away but was quickly interrupted and with shrapnel piercing his brain. With a small lamp in his hand, and Mikhail Tukhachevsky, who knew that he was on the list, was traveling with some armed men to escape to Siberia. Little did he know, his also loyal soldiers were in fact Okhrana double agents. How did the youngest one get the signal? The deed was done right there on the streets of Omsk. The new Napoleon had met his Waterloo. The c killings continued. With many more dying hour after hour, the Okhran hunted for traitors in the snow of vicious ways, killing thousands of men at 5 a.m. When all traitors on the list were dead, the Tsar finally ordered the end of the purge. The blood-soaked moon watches over us. And it was 5 a.m., and the, all in all, the night went ex exactly how Tukhachevsky protected it. But now here he was, laying dead on the streets of Omsk, with his remains about to be burnt. After the purge considered, or concluded, even some members of Okhran and their families were killed to keep this operation as secretive as possible. Yerev Isayevsky was a young soldier. He was about to turn 21 this year, however, he thought of everything he did up until this point. In the name of the Tsar, he killed many, many people. If it were a war, he would probably think differently, but the people who he murdered were all his brothers and sisters, fellow Russians. He tried to cope with it, very, he tried very hard to do so, but the faces of all the people he purposely murdered were haunting him, not letting him sleep. Then he thought of the solution for the problem. He was stationed near Finland, and he asked his company commander to let him go out to their tent. That wish was granted. No one was around, he took a small pistol out of his pocket and opened his mouth. The sound of gunshot echoed. He could not bear it, so he decided to end it all. 
This, however, wasn't the case with only Izevsky, but many other people, men, and recent conscripts who could not bear to see so much death. Even though the purge is ended, a scar shall forever be imprinted on its perpetrators. Russia saved. Oh, nice. But po political popularity. Overall, we still got the conservatives willing it to allow their turn on the Tsar if we do enough to convince them. Luckily, we can improve our chances with the conservatives by ruining our opposition, the Bolsheviks. Wow, we don't have very much political power at all, do we? That kind of sucks, but that's okay. They like in democracy support, huh? Ooh, yeah, we want to rush and get as much support as possible, probably. Joint Western Development. That's not bad. Far East Expansion Schemes. Oh, a research slot, too. Um, restore the Trans-Siberian Railroad. The Trans-Siberian Railroad has said four so functions. The bad part is that the railroad is falling apart. Now it does not function as well as it used to. Now it's time to fix this. Ooh. That's not good. Far Eastern Expansion Schemes. While small parts of the Far East are more developed than others, they still have room for improvement. Luckily, one city is identified with which is perfect for expansion, being Vladivostok. Yay, Vladivostok. Hopefully, nothing bad happens. 46%. How low can we go before we have a civil war or whatever? We had Russia. Seems like a good idea. Oh, we get political power here. 5% more. Language. Ooh. Joint Western Development. Western Russia is at the very heart and soul of our nation and its history. Uh, since most of our nation's our empire's population is in Europe, most of our industry should be in Europe as well. Track it in the Cossacks. Diversifying the army. Nations in East Siberia. Beginning consolidating power. Yeah, I definitely want to go down there quickly. He definitely is more political power. Liquid gold and... Ooh, that's not bad, too. But, well, White's Army School of Research. Russia's had a long history of exceedingly powerful military ar mil military artillery. Now we have strayed from this for a while, we can bring us back to that past. Oh, hello. It's coal mines. Ketchumberg. 90 days, that's not bad. Inviting American highway investors? Oh, you get free uh, infrastructure. Ooh, civvies. Ooh, I like that. What else is down here first before we do that? More civvies. <clears throat> oh, one, two, three, four, five civvies. Two infrastructure, two civvies. And you get more construction speed. Give us those five civvies. Heck yeah. As much as I want to do this one fast, um, well, I'll do conservative lobby. Well, the conservatives within our government already are on our side. For the most part, we must make sure they stay on our side. The easiest way to do so is to dissuade them to our side with some small gifts. God, we'll get like no political power. Which sucks so bad. So much. Nations are building up, preparing for the final struggle. It's only 1936 still, but yeah. Hey, let's get our fourth research slot finally. And yeah, go and do that one too. Church. Well, might as well. Uh, Russia, if you're going to do this, please go right ahead. Russia is a very orthodox nation religion-wise, and promoting the church will not only get more support from the church, but also gets more support from the more traditional conservatives within Russia. Yeah, might as well. Money rubber, too. Because we're at 42%, which is not good. The Romanov Foundation. Ooh. The Romanov Foundation. Now, the Romanov, the Romanov Foundation, if made, would be a way of increasing public foundation, and overall helping the people get farther in life. We can do both of these, and then we can do Tsar public donations, which would be good as well. And 14 days, one day's left. Nice. Tsar public donations. We can make direct donations to various groups and to construction projects. That would improve the quality of life for much of Russia. This would also raise the popularity among the public. It's a cute conservatives. That's not bad, too. And we don't necessarily want more democracy support, right? I guess we are conservative democracies for now. We're not radicals yet. Oh, this is actually going up by quite a bit. Authoritarian democracy? The opening of the Romanov Foundation. This morning, in the Tsar just the people of St. Petersburg, in the speech, he announced the opening of the Romanov Foundation. That's a charitable royal foundation which aims for the betterment of the people's lives in Russia. The Romanov Foundation works in an interlinked chain of command. Small donations from anywhere between 10 rubles up to 20,000 rubles would be, of course, accepted. Um, this money would be directly transported to the people living in extreme poverty, starting from St. Petersburg all the way to the Far East. A large sum of this money would also be spent on fueling Russia's lacking science and to go fight diseases in many parts of Russia. This is contrary to the usual attitude of the Tsars towards the people. Even if this initiative is not for the sense of humanity, this is sure to improve the Tsar's image in tremendously amongst the people. A humanitarian effort, of course. Nicholas' image. Which would be bad. Conservative democracy. 
Small, small Russian businesses might as well. Well, have a generally easy time getting support from the big corporations. The small businesses in Russia will have a big impact as well. Therefore, we should appreciate for appreciation for the many other startups within Russia. But for Zaza, the Polish make up the second largest ethnicity in Russia, on second only to Russian. This means we need their support. If we want to restore the Tsar and put forth extra work to assist the Polish and his image. Nicholas has had some issues here and there where the Bolsheviks made an attempt to overthrow him. Now, while they did fail, sure, the public was not a fan of Nicholas in particular, so we must fix his image. Fun anti left propaganda. The Bolsheviks and all the leftists within Russia pose a threat to any return, future return of the Romanov family as the Tsar of all Russians. Um, therefore, we must begin weakening their presence, starting out with the funding of anti left press and propaganda. That should be good. And what else here? 1937. Happy New Year, everybody. Grab some of this. I guess we're going down this way, so we'll go this way as well. From Trotskyites. As we're not in control of the government, we can't arrest Trotskyite or exile him for Russia. On the other hand, he's quite easy to frame, which is just what we shall do. So my less in support for Trotskyites as well and secure the conservatives. The conservatives within our nation are far for the most part on our side now. We must secure all their assistance and restore the house of Romanov once for all. To do this, we must show just how much we've done to the leftists of Russia. And now, we can go ahead and arrest Beria and Trotsky. So, let's see. Let's see what happens. But we're doing the restoration of the Tsar. Uh, we have won over both the public and the government. Now we must restore the position of Tsar to Nicholas II. This also needs the house of the Romanovs will be brought back to its full glory. Out of the succession or success of the 1905 revolution, the Tsar was forced to abdicate under orders of the newly formed Duma. A new provision of government was established, but mere days after the abdication of Nicholas II, the Tsar remained a hated figure. For years he did nothing, um, almost nothing. He did not take part in the Republic government or politics, instead, he withdrawn from the public eye to live with his family in Peterhof. However, this all changed with the victory of the Belgorov's Union of the Russian people. He was summoned to the 7th Duma under executive orders of the President. Upon arrival, Belgorov and the other leaders of the Russian monarchist political groups greeted him. And in the house of the Duma, he felt the nostalgia of the very same room the Duma forced him to advocate him. He had not seen the interior of the building since 1906. Not much had changed, excluding a podium. Belgorov gestured towards the ceremonial throne of the Tsar and the Duma. Nicholas sat in the chairs. Belgorov made the preparations at last. He stood up with the ushering in of the new members of the Duma and the new government. Belgorov walked towards the Tsar, taking a knee, handing him his crown on the finest silk pillow. Nikolai took the crown and adorned it on his head. Nikolai made a speech to the Duma in private, declaring a new era in Russia history, and granting, him, uh, granting upon himself the title Emperor of Russia of the Grand Duke of Finland. The Duma erupted into joy, the crowd chanting, God save the Tsar. Nikolai nearly shed a tear, though the remaining leftist figureheads left in protest. It was a joyous occasion. Nikolai and Belgorov made their way to the Winter Palace, in which he and the royal family would remain, enjoying a new powerful lifestyle by throwing a grand party in the palace. And once again, the children of the Tsar. Beginning called consolidation of power, and they'll do the Tsar's army. While the Tsar's restored, they're still more of a figurehead than anything else. Now, while we've got conservative support still, we must, not draft, we must draft a constitution. Give the Tsar more power, of course. That will not have total power in the end, unless we shape it that way. Tsar's army. We've finished our military crackdowns. We now know how to shape the military into the war machine it was once was. It would be great. So we can actually edit and train these divisions. And Tsarovsky's arrest. One step forward, the second step, third step. These are the steps of Orushkov Oyanov, an ex socialist. Good day, Commissioner. And long live the Tsar. Cut the crap and sit down before I blow your brains out, replied the commissioner, Sergei Iv Ivalnov. Yes, Sir Trotsky and his followers are able to publish and print their newspapers somewhere around here. You know your punishment if you're lying, right? Yes, sir, execution before the public, but rest assured I'm not lying. In that case, I have these, he said, as he handed him two pieces of paper over. The first one is an official pardon for the Tsar. So I can't shoot you in the darn face as soon as I see you. The second paper here is some paperwork. It should get you a job if you have any education or qualifications for it. Now get lost before changing my mind. Hello, you know, I took the papers, bowed down before the commissioner, and took his leave. Ilyanov's mind was in a state of disarray, and he needed now to arrest and torture another person, not because they like committed a crime, but just because they did not agree with the Tsar. He screamed at Vladimir Erkirkov, come here once. The two few men arrived before the commissioner. He has certainly shouted in a union. Today we make it tiring to root Russia of Trotsky once for all. The Tsar ever needs no one dead. If I see both of, you, both of you shoot anyone, I will shoot you both myself. Got it? Yes, sir. The Tsar ever never said this. The commissioner had some humanity left in him, and he would not kill anyone just for the heck of it. Thirty minutes later, the three men gathered during the chilly winds of everything beyond the Urals and boarded their horses. They started making their way towards a place marked by Ulyanov on the map. They, on their way there, Sergei explained his plan. Listen up, Vladimir. You deal with the bottom floor. Do not shoot anyone. And Irkarov. Or Irkarov. You help me... You deal help. You will help me find him, but the same applies to you. When they reach the outskirts of the button, they busted it hands up and surrendered to us, and no one would be hurt. Sergei screamed as he shot his pistol on the ceiling. Vladimir went to evacuate all personnel out, and Erkirov and Sergei rushed to the first floor, where they frantically searched all doors, evacuating the staff in the process. Eventually, they found a room labeled Chairman's Office. They busted in Saltrowski, putting a revolver inside his mouth. Oh no, you don't, as Sergei rushed towards him and knocked the pistol out of his hand. It signaled for Erkirov to evacuate the rest of the staff, which proceeded to do. 
Trotsky shouted, kill me, don't take me there, I beg you. The Tsar wants you alive, and he shall have that, as he knocked out Trotsky. He handcuffed the man and proceeded to exit the building. He saw the whole staff outside without a single casualty. You both have done well. I'll be sure to get you both a promotion. Both of them shared a smile, and all three of them boarded their horses. However, the only thing going on in Sergei's mind was how many sleepless nights will he experience now. He only begged that the Lord would forgive him for this. A threat eliminated. Bears it. Arrest. <coughs> it was 3.25 p.m., and every rain was pouring down in the city of Moscow. In a small brick house, Leventhory Barrio was reading a newspaper article. He remembered to himself, those darn goons over the Earp won the election, so the downfall brush was nearing, I suppose. He was about to pick up his half-inch glass of vodka and suddenly heard a knock on the door. He walked sluggishly towards the door and opened it, and what he saw made his stomach sink. He saw two armed Cossacks holding a piece of paper with Leventhory Barrio wanted alive written on it. Well, a moment's delay, he rushed to the nearest window and attempted to jump out, for he realized he was shot in the leg. A Cossack came up to him and grabbed him by his collar and started begging for mercy. The Cossack replied, You swan, you have escaped the eyes of justice for too long. Good night. And knocked the humongous monster of a human in a series of punches. As him and his comrade were dragging the bear down the streets of Moscow, everybody uh, looked towards them. The Cossack shouted that if the people will be disloyal to the Tsar, this will happen to them, and screamed at them to disperse soon. About half an hour later, the two men reached the police station through Beria and Iran jail cell and were given a thousand rubles each for the service of the Tsar. A threat eliminated. Hey, 44%. Support, not bad. Not bad. That's right, army, of course. Continue Russification, because I definitely want to get down here. Opening Russian language schools. Uh, left menace. Enemy laws, bidding their time, and fringes of Russia. Now we shall end them. New constitution. Oh, support for the new constitution is greater than 50. Yeah, it's going to take a while to get more political power. Tsar's lineage, that's not bad, too. Eastern crackdown. So, a Tsar for the hundreds. Black hundreds movement shall eventually seize power. A Tsar for all of them. Constitutional monarchy? Well, isn't it the, the other way the, the other group wanted us to go? Like, literally the um, other party? So, we'll probably go this way. Russia is in the hands of God. Holy Russian, Russian Empire. Because if you're not a radical, what's, what's the point? Uh, small loving conservatives, yeah, keep getting more government support. Well, the power grab begins. After a thought, uh, a lot of thought and consideration, Belgorov came back to St. Petersburg. He needed to discuss something very crucial with the Tsar. He came to the res residency of the Tsar, the White or Winter Palace, and asked the guards whether the Tsar was available. The Tsar was standing in the balcony, and as he saw Belgorov, he signaled him to come inside. There he was. Belgorov once again faced the Tsar and told him to sit down. Vodka? No, Your Highness, I have come to deliver a proposal. Go on. Your Highness, it is time we start to increase your influence within the government. Elections and the democratic system have to be abolished. I am hooked. Belgorov started to describe his proposal to the Tsar. How the Tsar's application is popularly plummeted. If they attempt to restore the Tsar's autocracy to its fullest extent, I will most definitely lead to a protest and violence all across the nation. So, Belgorov proposed a new system. The Tsar would slowly be given power over the politics of Russia, starting with an increased influence over the parliament and eventually restoring autocratic rule. As a move so the Tsar's image is not tarnished, the Tsar, having no other option, agreed with Belgorov, and now, when he offered vodka to the politician, he gladly accepted. It's clearly a well thought out strategy by Belgorov, and slowly but surely Russia will return to being an autocracy. Kudos to Belgorov. What the heck happened here? Which way did they go? They must have went with uh, concessions to the people. This is disgusting. Hungry, you look so bad. Oh my goodness. Jesus. Why would you choose this route? I mean, I'd choose this route eventually too, but like, just to see what it's like. God, this is so ugly. Bosnia? Croatia? Of course, Serbia's there too. And there's a war, which will help out someone here. Benito? Why? Um, actually, who's, who's down here? Despotic. Nap pops. We don't like anybody down here. We can't even send volunteers, so it doesn't even matter. Uh, ask for support and servants of war. Alexander the support. Uh, does that support support? Intervene more. Well, if Alexander the first is asking for support, we'll help him out. Well. I guess we can't. Okay, then. Uh, keep getting more conservative support, but not too. Uh, Imperial Diplomacy. We'll do all this stuff later. Uh, left Menace. Oh. Blue Stability. Continue Russification. I do want to go that quickly. Continue Russification. Russia is a massive country with many ethnicities, languages, and cultures. So those obviously, the Russian is a dominant. We should continue to absorb more to our identity, especially those who seek autonomy from the St. Petersburg government. Might as well. Well. This. He belongs in inaugural dress. Hello, he belongs. Opening Russian language schools. Everyone in the Republic must speak Russian as a Republic. That's the first language. So we should force our schools <clears throat> around the nation to focus on teaching the motherland language. Or the motherland tongue. 
Oh, we can actually train stuff. Yay, finally. These guys are okay. They're not great. They're not bad. Um, do we still have Simonyov? He still exists. I thought we purged him. I literally thought we purged him. I'm pretty sure we purged him. Oh, the Tsar's Constitution. Support the Tsar's Constitution for fun. As we begin our consolidation of power with Russia and begin transition to a society, much like before the horrific revolution in 1905, first we must gather support. The current support of the new constitution is 30. Denounce anti-constitutional leaders. By 10? You lose a lot, though. Oh, wait. Limit speech. 10, but you get, you get 40 more political power. I'll screw that. Let's get, let's get more political power. Yeah, that helps out. Currently, we are at what? 0.67? Not bad. Any upgrades here at all? No. You guys are kind of cavalry leaders. You're the tank leader. Obviously. Um, which is not bad, actually. It's a pretty good tank division. 18 combo with. And that's preparation for war. It's only 37 guys. Relax. You guys, Vlasov. Ooh. Get better bombers. Um, don't really want to do that one. How much support do we need? I guess it's greater than 50. So we need 50 support, so. We're to find the army. Left menace. Lefts within Russia are menaced to our people and our government. Early on, we can only do small time moves against them. Now that we're in power, though, we can begin making the big time moves that should have been made. Oh, look at all this we got right now. 30. 40. It's a lot of political power loss. I don't mind doing these two smaller ones first. Because that should put us over the edge. Or, yeah, that should put us over 50. And draw off to a new constitution. Now that we have support necessary for a new constitution, it's time we actually begin making one. That of which will be exactly what we do. And continue lobbying for conservative support. Because we, god dang it, we need it. Huh. I don't want to do either because we lose so much. Yeah, we get a lot more support, but still. Uh, we'll see. Because we're also on partial mobilization. How are we looking here? Not bad. 39%, that sucks. Didn't, didn't go down as much as I wanted it to, which is not bad, but still, 33%. Get 40 more. Nice. Left Menace, actually, how, if we wait, how long? 13 days, dang it. Um, 28 days, 31 days. There's anything for like, that's 14 days, not bad. I do want to do this one, but that's going to take so much time. 104, god dang. 37, artillery, go and grab this one too. We have 8 days left. <clears throat> Just get to do that one too. That's fine. Infrastructure, civvy speeds. I want to save our political power just in case, maybe. Maybe that one too, just in case. We always need a spin if we're that stuff. Um, the self coup. Oh, now he's do self coup. Huh? Oh, the nap pops now. Okay. And then draft new constitution. That'll be good. Crackdowns. Illegalized leftist press. Left menace. Propaganda literature is something. Whilst you don't see it too often, it's plagued the world worse than the Black Death did. The type of literature which is used did not incite emotions, but instead influence people in the worst way possible. A piece of filth, as we like to describe it. One such foul filth was a communist manifesto published in 1848 by the Germans Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. Its effect on the people is like a hypnotic trance, a dream of a perfect society where illiterate workers control everything and the people follow this flawed theory like a sheep following a sheep herder. In Russia, the influence of the scum was huge. Large socialist groups have been popping up ever since the reign of Nicholas I. In 1898, a young intelligent man going by the name Vladimir Lenin wrote the Communist Manifesto. Ever since then, he made an enemy in every attempt to disrupt the Tsar and incite revolution. His brother tried to assassinate the Tsar and many more things upon the Tsar's forced abdication during the 1905 revolution and the ascension of the Republican government. He tried his hardest in making the RSDLP win the elections, even with unfair tactics. Unfortunately, he never succeeded in achieving that, but after his bitter defeat in the Duma elections, he obtained a reason to rally the people behind him. It caused general unrest. However, Considering the t state of the RSDLP, it's foolish to assume that he will be taking any major steps. The Red Tower will keep on growing, but it is the responsibility of the White Embankment to prevent a Red Flood. We must strip Russia off this filth. 
Um, Eastern Crackdown is not bad. I like that one, but embrace the Tsar's lineage. The Tsar title has been held by various people throughout history and by various families as well. Thus, Romanov, being us, is the current family with the said title, and we must now embrace this fact. Let's get more political power, too, which is good. Um, oh, we didn't get radio yet? Holy crap. Anything here? No, not too much. Brute machine tools. Armored trains, why not? No, looking pretty good right now. 57, just in case. I'll keep doing that one again. Actually, is there one we can get 40 more political power? I'd like to do that one again. It's actually very nice. If we're spending 50, I want to get as many cities as possible still. It's not bad. Specialize. Two. You guys. Infrastructure Industrial Development Organization. And then we'll legalize left express. And restore the empire too. Oh, that'd be really good. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Tsar's constitution. The times come for the Tsar's constitution. We choose between adapting a more practical constitution or a more radical constitution. What should we go with? Head of the Duma. The Tsar used to have much more power and influence over government before the Russian 1905 revolution. Should we make him head of the Duma? Keep him away from our democracy or give him even more government powers? Hmm. Do we want to go constitutional monarchy? No. So, occasionally res uh, reside? It can I interfere? 31%. Oh, God. Workers have long been clamoring about low pensions and this and that. What should you do about the Constitution? Slash pensions? Slight increase? Decrease? Yeah, that's good. Tax cuts and nobility. I was asking to cut the taxes, which we do. They are our friends. And we need the cash. Hmm. And we need the cash. Freedom of speech laws. Many people have spoken out against an amazing government, but uh, the power to stop this with a new Constitution, what should you do? We're gonna allow this? Watch him out. That's not good. Oh boy. <laughs> That's really not good. Illegalized leftist press. The leftists still have different media outlets all across Russia, and such as the newspaper companies Pravda. If we should shut down the ability of the leftists, we must take out one of their sources. One of them. Oh, so we're back up to 30% for now, but it's going to drop anyways, which is not good. Um, just going to hang out here for now, train. You know, like normal. The good stuff. Oh, I forgot to get even more army XP too, god dang it. Well, whatever. We're really being a crap ton of cities, which is great, don't get me wrong, but still. Naval bombers, interwar bombers, all really good stuff to get. Plenty of artillery for now. Guns, we're going to need way more eventually, too. You know what? So we have so many. Go and start making some military factories as well. 20, oh, God. 27%? That's not good. Anything else we could do here? No. Not bad. Just gotta keep an eye on this stuff. And the Eastern Crackdown? While the main leftist threat is present in Europe, we must crush any Eastern leftists as well. Sadly, this means we must research or search through the Siberian wilderness to see if any we find anyone there. Perhaps we might find some hidden resources there as well. <coughs> Lose a crucial population, that's okay. Oh, look, the instruction peak goes up, though. Use war support. Well, hopefully we're going to restore the empire. Speaking of conservatism, we don't have to deal with as much, uh... Stuff like that. Oh, God. Well, I'm not sure what's going to happen. Definitely need this, though. And it's almost 38. Go and grab this. It's fine. Come on. Okay, so increase it. Oh god, when removed for after for 50 days. Moderate the rush. Okay. Restore the Empire? 
We were sort of the Imperial family, crushed left menace, reformed reform the military, and even got the people massively on our side. And now, though, we must bring back all of Russia's previous land under our rule again. My god, we need that approval rating. It's not much, but Jesus, we need it. Um, here, Mikhail Drozdovsky. 0. 0.6. That's the best we've got right now. 0. 0.6. Oh, good lord. Do we have infantry specials already? Armor, concealment. Uh, no, we don't actually. Oh, we have you. Yeah, we have you. What else going? Oh my gosh, it keeps dropping so hard. It's not good. It's really empire. We should help us out too. Twenty-seven percent. All right. And she'll be able to have lobbing small for conservatives as well as a large. Or maybe not at all now. We'll get more stuff here, but come on. Columbia's killing itself or killing other things. Cool. It's fine, whatever. We don't care. It's out for the hundreds. Seize power over Russia. <clears throat> I don't want a presidential approval or anything. Um, wow, crush Ukrainian resistance. Divine orthodoxy. Oh, wow. RFP. Oh, we come Napops. That's cool. Increase the pres presidential approval. I mean, unless you get more, 2% is not enough. Or, uh, or the effects are mitigated, or you don't even have to care about it too much. There we go. Oh, now we lost all that political power. God dang it. It's all for the hundreds. Black hundreds exist for many decades now and never had any form of power. With the Tartan properly restored, though, the black hundreds can finally begin to accomplish their goals. I guess. We have no stability. Uh, the Empire Restored, at least. <clears throat> it was very early in the morning, only the early birds were able to witness the Tsar's carriage making its way to the podium, which had recently been constructed. On the streets, the Tsar saw many people, starving, homeless. You don't think much about them, though. The streets of St. Petersburg had always been like that. When he reached the podium, the Tsar was greeted by Belgorov and other members of the Earp. After two hours, the preparations for the speech were over, and the podium was surrounded by tens of thousands of people. The Tsar, along with Belgorov, stepped onto the podium, and the Tsar raised his hand to silence, uh, signify silence. A long while back, the Russian nation achieved victory against the Swedes in the Great Northern War. The moment was considered Russia's ascension to one of the great powers. Any calculations of European politics would be incomplete without factoring the Empire of Russia. Catherine the Great brought stability in the golden era to Russia, and the Tsar Alexander I made it all over to Paris, bringing the mighty Napoleonic Empire down. From these, it's quite evident that the dynasty of Romanov was responsible for Russia's glory. However, after the public took charge in Russia, it was as if we were facing humiliation one after another, after the other. These series of humiliations will end today. The autocratic rule of the Tsar will be restored to Russia, however, the doom will not cease to exist. I will get Russia superior to all of the world, second to none, once and for all. God will, and the Empire will rise again. God is with us. God save the Tsar. The speech was met with thunderous applause and cheers of long live the Tsar. This move by the Tsar and the Earp members may very well cause some general unrest, but the restoration of the autocracy will surely shows true potential once Russia faces a question to its glory again. Long live Russia, long live the Tsar. And we went to the, back to the tricolor. there. Russian Empire. Cool. 20%? Not cool. Oh, we need complete Russian glory. Uh, increases by 2%. That's not very good. Um, where the heck is Russian glory? Oh my gosh. We're going to go all the way down there? Jesus. Um, Imperial Diplomacy? Well, if we go down here... <coughs> we move ethnic complex. Well, will the Tsar return to his rightful throne? We can begin reaching out to the rest of the world. We must prepare for the upcoming conflict or the risk of Russia. Fall, the, fall of Russia of the Tsar permanently. Is there, is there any other way we can get more support? I mean, yeah, we, we heard it quite a bit before. But, like, bros, we need something else. Some other way to get more support. As long as unless nothing happens to us, but there's no guarantee that nothing nothing bad will happen to us. We always get one political power a day too, so which is nice. But still, I'm probably just gonna grab this guy. We have a lot of cavalry. Well, 
if we ever get enough political power, of course. Russian invasion of Saxony. 30%. Yeah, we must keep a lot of political power for now. Imperial diplomacy. Defend our brothers. Prepare for the final struggle. Oh. Many enemies plagued the Slavic race and seek to tear down. We must form a defense back to protect our peoples. Well, that in mind. Actually. Anything interesting and unique here? No? Okay. Well, oh, we can grab Zukov now. That's too much political power. Let's go grab cavalry. Just because we do have eight. These divisions are literally just cavalry divisions. Even though they're not very good. Um, actually, before we do that. Just in case. It ain't gonna do very much, but it, it should help us out at least a little bit. I'm gonna do that too, anyways. Almost one political partner. No? More saves would be nice. Russia forms the greatest Slavic Entente. Nice. The Tsar enters the stage. Austrian tyrants, Ottoman menace. Whoa. Submission, submission. Far Eastern threat. Mongol leanings. Well. Growth of the Levant, deal with the Tyrannists. Reclaim the glory of Constantia. Afghan policing. Wow. Ottoman menace? Do we even want to start with that? Or else find the army might be better to do first. Well, the Turks have been a mess of control within the Balkans and as well south overall. We now have managed to gather enough power to deal with this mess once for all. Um. <coughs> well, we'll see. Well, that's the case. We don't need more, uh, bros around here. Of Saxony. I'm just not sure how we're supposed to get more constitutional power fast enough. Ziggurat's very annoying. 22 days. And then we'll, we'll just fight the army next. Yeah. The Russian army is home to many conscripted minorities. We should have prioritized Russians for the highest positions. Might as well, I guess. Transylvanian rebels. Bismarck's Treaty. We might want to rush down this way, too. The Austrian tyrants. We've reached absolute power within the world. We now can deal with the final threat. Austria. Let's kill off the Austrians before they can do any harm to us. East African ambitions. Because we want to make sure that we do well with the Prussians. Operation Third Rome. Contact Transylvanian rebels. Transylvanians hate being under the oppressive rule of Vienna and Budapest. We'll play under the sympathies and try to reunite them with Romania. Oh, we're actually running out of things to build, huh? That's nice. Good, good actually. Uh, I'm not sure because we have a lot of decisions to help improve infrastructure, anyways. But still, we'll do that just in case. But at the same time, we'll get, we need some rubber too. So there you go. Two there, and then get like one right there too. If you really want to, you can do that too. There you go. Ta-da. 32%. You pay Russia. Here. That's two. See what you can do about that for now. You can be even thicker. Thicker the better. <clears throat> Days left. Yeah. East African expedition. Ethiopia has been a friend of the Russian people since the scrum for Africa. Though uh, our Salgalo colony Djibouti, we could protect them from the Austrian threat, boost the government. 
So, United Danubian Principalities. Huh. Blank Corruption. Cool. May of 38. Armor's not bad. We don't have enough army XP to do anything we really want. Think here, not yet. Some rubber, maybe some more extraction would be nice as well. Hamburg Conference. Oh, they actually went to war with them. Wow. Very aggressive, this timeline. It's alright, though. Go and do that. 36% is not bad. You can't see any volunteers goring. Nine divisions, wow. We are not making any bombers, do we? Are we? Uh, we have quite a few planes around here, too. Uh, tactical bombers is fine. But we'll probably end with a revived Bismarck's Treaty. We should pursue some military cooperation with Prussia, but nothing more. War games with the Prussians can improve our military's fighting capabilities, and also bring our two nations together. There's also the advantage of improving the two military's fighting ability to fight alongside one another. Which would be bad. Mass try altitude combat. Um, the Austrians got a large amount of mountain cells in general at higher altitude regions within their empire. If we should successfully invade them, we must train our own forces and send out wide divisors. The Balkans currently are under our thumb. And with the war of uh, Austria coming f fast, we must prepare the Balkans. Uh, the quickest and most efficient method of doing so is send them equipment and military advisors, which is what we'll do. Even though we can't, we have to wait to do that one. But you know what? Whatever. If you enjoyed uh, the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when we'll have a lot more conflict. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.